So I first tried this setup with this camera and this lens when I was shooting a video just like this one. And I realized that having the lens all the way out here at 17 gave me just over 24 mil, it's like 25.5 mil. And then when I go in all the way, I'm only up to about 42 mil. But to be honest, most of the time on my A7S, I was usually between 24 mil and 35 mil, occasionally going down to 20 or 17. But this combination with the crop factors, getting the lens to become like a perfect talking head lens and also kind of a perfect street photography lens <laughs> is how this ended up being glued to this tripod. It just means I can leave the one camera with the one lens connected to a monitor and then it's ready to go all the time and it requires me to change lenses way less. When shooting street with this lens, it actually means that I can quickly swap between my two most used street focal lengths being 28 and 35 very quickly without changing lenses. Okay, these aren't shapes, but these are vibes. Like in this situation here, I first tried shooting at about 35 mil, a little bit further away. Then I actually moved around the corner to get a bit closer and was shooting at 28 a lot closer. Typically because I'm shooting 28 mil on a prime and 35 mil on a prime, it's rare that you get to try both of these side by side on the same scene. Okay, so less so shapes, but more like repetition. So we have the guy in the foreground having a snack. We've got the repeated bars like along here. And then we have another guy in the back uh, also having a snack, which I hope we can see. Can we see? Oh yeah, he's having a big swig. Oh, that kind of works. I don't know. Let's wait until we actually see it on a big screen and maybe it works, maybe it's awful. Distracted by meaningless candidates to try to focus. Also, camera. Let's see if I can block this guy's face with his camera. I <laughs> no, I was really hoping you'd hold it higher to his face. <laughs> block. You get to hear lots of my awkward, nervous laugh of someone seeing me take a photo of them very close. The biggest problem for me when using this camera for street photography comes down to when I want to shoot candid photos of people but quite quickly and pretty close. Hi, happy birthday. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> you can see from this specific shot here that I was quite close to the subject and I actually had to hold up the camera for like more than a second to hold back button focus to get focus and then press the shutter a couple of times. And to be honest, while recording those parts of this video, it went probably the best it has done. You'll see from the examples in this video, it looks like there isn't a problem. But I swear, usually, it goes much worse. For some reason, when I was shooting this video, things just seem to work out a lot better than normal. Sorry, mate. I wanted to take your photo. You look really good standing there. Good <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looked quite whimsical to tell me to nose you around. <laughs> are you all right? Do you need directions? You know, are you going? No, we're all right. Okay, no worries. Take care. Like in these scenarios here, I wanted to challenge myself to get much closer to shoot some candids. So I was shooting at either 28 mil equivalent or 35 mil equivalent and being pretty close to my subjects. The main benefit that I came away with was being able to shoot wide open. Being able to shoot at 2.8 or f4 or something like that was kind of foreign to me. I pretty much only ever shoot on my vintage lenses at f8 or f11. Sometimes I go all the way up to f16. Sometimes I go all the way down to f5.6, but those are the limits. Because I'm usually using zone focus, I'm usually trying to get a deep depth of field to capture as much in focus as possible. So having the ability to shoot at 2.8 on a couple of candles like this and the subject be razor sharp, it was actually quite refreshing and made me smile a little bit. Like this gentleman here, he's smiling because he became one of the 10.9% of people watching this channel who have clicked the subscribe button. It costs you nothing and helps out the channel a whole lot. Oh yes, it's jolly good. To be honest, while shooting right now, I've actually not really minded using the LCD on this camera as much. However, it is always a bit of a heartbreak when you turn it on to just having the EVF on and you see what you've got. It's just such like a low magnification and low resolution. It makes it not really that fun for doing that kind of street photography. I guess for doing like a POV video like this, it's better to have the LCD so you can see what I'm pointing the camera at sometimes. However, that isn't really 
how I would usually choose to shoot. On the flip side though, I have got my A7S inside my Uniqlo bag. This has a completely different experience. The screen is as good, if not better, than the A7700. I can't really remember the specs of the screens, but the EVF is then like class leading. It's so, so good. And it means when you're using like a vintage lens like this and doing some zone focus, it just works like nearly perfectly. Um, as a digital camera to replace that kind of like film shooting experience. Oh, double cello. This is a bass guitar and it's the exact same thing, but instead of playing like this, you tip it on the side, cello, you've got a bass. A point I always come back to, regardless of the camera I've been using, the lens I've been shooting on, the time of year I've been shooting, or the location I'm shooting in, is how much fun do I have with the camera setup? If you enjoy using your camera that you've got for shoot photography, you will use it more often. This does come down to three different factors. One is the camera, one is the lens, and the third is the photographer. One photographer might like 85mm with autofocus. Another photographer might like 28mm with zone focus. So these two photographers aren't always gonna get along with the same camera system, the same lens mount, the same as each other. That's kind of the amazing thing about photography and street photography, because it's a solo endeavor and because you start with your first camera on your own for the most part, you soon learn what works with that camera, what doesn't. And then when you try other cameras or other lenses or borrow your friend's camera for the afternoon, you start to sort of see what you like from different cameras and what you want to try next. And it's an expensive experiment. There's no doubt about that. But trying all these different things lets you actually nail down what benefits you the most in terms of removing the obstacle of the shot you see and the shot you get at the end of the day. Your camera wants to get as far out of the way as possible. It just wants to be like an extension of your body. And the same can be said for the size of your camera. Whether you want to use something small like a compact Micro Four Thirds or a Ricoh GR, or whether you're happier with a larger full frame body like this A7S or a DSLR. Maybe you're happier with a bigger handful to carry when you're shooting. Sadly for you and me, size does matter to some people. And whether you want to use a smaller camera or a larger camera, that's up to you. But size also matters when it comes to sensor size. Not only sensor size, but the resolution of those sensors. Like I talk about in this video here. I fully started doing this thinking I was going to have a bit of a bad time with this setup. The autofocus is pretty good. This lens is pretty boss. I just stick it to 35 or 42 or 30 and then I'm in street photography heaven. 